Thank you very much. May we please be seated, Supreme Court, and thank you to all our honorable guests uh, this morning uh, for your speeches, and uh, most importantly, I wish to recognize in a very, very special way our new Ranet friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning again. Good morning. You look impeccably smart. You look confident. You are yearning to go and achieve. And we are here to celebrate you, to congratulate you, and to encourage you. Thank you all the speakers for those very, very wonderful words and nuggets of wisdom that you have shared with our new learned friends. I recall in 1987 when none of you was born, perhaps even your parents, when I sat where you are, and Dr. Friend Ojiambo stood here to encourage us. And as I was going through my mind, I think the same words he said to you are the same words that he said to us 37 years ago. That is, we follow justice. We live for justice. We respect the rule of law and we work with integrity. Thank you, Dr. Friend Ojiambo. It doesn't change. <laughs> because he has served the law faithfully, and I think God has blessed him with youthfulness, and he has brought up wonderful people like Madam President of the Law Society, who has not slept for the last two weeks. <laughs> I say the last two weeks because you know we suffered also a tragedy in the judiciary when our magistrate was shot while sitting at the seat of justice to discharge our constitutional mandate. And Madam President was with us all through. Thank you very much for standing with the vulnerable and standing for justice. So for me, I really wish to congratulate all of you, our new advocates, on this momentous day. As you stand on the threshold of this very distinguished career, I dare say you have joined a very noble and respected profession. And we who came before you, are very, very proud to welcome you to the bar as advocates of the High Court of Kenya. As every speaker has said, it is true, your journey to this day has been nothing short of dedication and hand work. Handing a Bachelor of Law's degree, surviving the rigors of the law school, I know how many times you were made to fail and re repeat. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mutai, uh, for being very, very kind to nurture these ones because they passed the bar exams, and for me, that's not a small feat. So please take a moment to reflect on these accomplishments and remember to express gratitude to those who supported you Remember your parents, remember your guardians, your friends, and teachers who supported you along the way. Their encouragement was vital in navigating this challenging path. And we are taught, as good people who trust in God, that we must always be grateful for whatever we receive. So remember, though, that today is not an end, but our beginning. The journey of being an advocate is continuous, marked by law, lifelong learning and commitment 
to the rule of law. I think from the events that are happening in our country, our refrain is that we should always observe the rule of law. We are all part of a communal pursuit of justice. We are missionaries, and our mission extends throughout our career. I'm so privileged to call you learned friends this morning because you are joining the bar at a pivotal moment when our country is at a crossroads. You belong to the generation that has been the focus of public discourse in our country in recent times, the generation known as Gen Z. We celebrate you, we honor you. I urge you to use your knowledge and skills in service of our country to help us navigate this historical moment. I also encourage you to continue using your voices and skills to advocate for initiatives that strengthen democratic governance. Use your voices and skills to help us respect human rights, to promote national unity, and to seek stability of our nation and beyond to advance peaceful resolution of disputes and foster national development and progress. At this moment, I take this opportunity to extend condolences and sympathies on behalf of the judiciary and on my own behalf to the families, friends, and relatives of those who lost their loved ones during the mass protests that we have witnessed across the country. Many of these were young people whose dreams were nipped in the bud, whose lives were cut short before they could realize their full potential and dreams. The causes for which they died for I also wish to wish a quick recovery to those who are injured and still recuperating in various hospitals across the country. When the framers of our Constitution provided for the right to peaceful and unharmed right to assemble, the Constitution provided for the right to demonstrate to picket and to present petitions to public authorities in Article 37. It did not envisage that anyone would lose their life while exercising this right, because life remains sacrosanct as protected under Article 26 of the Constitution, and the law enforcement should exercise caution in balancing the protection of the law and order and the rights of protesters. We cannot, for us, judges and judicial officers, envisage anybody taking law into their own hands and taking away a life. Life is precious. It should always be preserved even if somebody is caught stealing or committing the worst form of a crime, they must be arrested and processed according to the law. We should not witness cases of excessive use of force that threaten the lives of peaceful and unharmed protesters. I therefore condemn the excessive use of force on protesters that we have witnessed and heard that the perpetrators be disciplined because life cannot just be taken away. There must be a process. Those who are the perpetrators of those cases of violence must be charged and prosecuted in accordance with the law because this country is governed by the rule of law. And there must be a process for everything. The state's responsibility is to protect life, not to take it away. 
at this moment. May I request that we stand up and observe a minute of silence in honor of the victims who have lost their of those garant children of this nation rest in peace may their lives rest in power amen habitat of disputes and conflicts that arise within our society we cannot descend in the arena of dispute this means that the judiciary must remain independent and cannot take sides in matters that have the likelihood to culminate into ripe disputes for resolution. This is an ideal that we will continue to respect and uphold so that everyone in this nation can find reprieve within the justice sector, can have the confidence to approach our courts because we are none aligned. Although the judiciary is an impartial arbiter, we cannot be silent, but always guide the nation on what is the rule of law. This is how we communicate to the nation by determining the disputes that come before us, by pointing out what are the provisions of the law. So the judiciary communicates through rulings and judgments in exercise of a sacred responsibility to uphold and protect the Constitution. That is why judges and magistrates across the country are sitting beyond standard working hours, including over the weekend, to ensure that the fundamental rights and freedoms guaranteed in the Constitution, <coughs> excuse me, are protected and preserved. These efforts are largely undocumented because our focus is to serve without expecting accolades. I therefore commend judges, judicial officers, and staff for their commitment and urge them to continue selflessly serving our people and our nation in the spirit of the Constitution and our blueprint, the social transformation through access to justice that places the people at the heart and the center of everything that we do. I reaffirm that our courts remain ready and open to hear and expeditiously determine all causes, especially those presented in connection with the ongoing arrests. We will do this in keeping faith with Article 48 of the Constitution, which grants every person in our country the right to access justice. This is a sacred right that will continue to be our guiding star. This commitment is to ensure that our nation continues on the path of observing the rule of law and constitutionalism and to guarantee that all state and non-state actors operate within the strict boundaries erected within the Bill of Rights. I also want to reiterate the importance for all of us citizens and duty bearers to conduct ourselves within the strict confines of the law and our constitution. It is crucial to underscore that our constitution provides for both rights and responsibilities. Those engaging in protest are under an obligation to do so peacefully in a manner and in a way that does not threaten life or property. I also urge citizens not to violate the trust that the Constitution has bestowed <coughs> us in Article 37 because we value life. The same way we value life and put a very high premium over life, we also respect private property. 
and therefore vandalizing, rooting, or setting a breeze, public or private property should be avoided. In addition, I call upon our law enforcement agencies to process any arranged or suspected criminal acts within the law. We should avoid any temptation to use extrajudicial means, including abductions, because this violates the Constitution and the law. It is an indignity to abduct somebody when you can just summon them to the police station if there is anything you require from them. Indeed, I also wish to share with you, as the National Council on the Administration of Justice, we've been working very hard to get the police service also to come up with a policy on the decision to arrest and decision to charge. It's not be, it should not be arbitrary. It should not be whimsical. It should be based on reasons that can be presented to the suspected person that we are required at the police station. And as I indicated in an earlier statement, all arrested persons should be brought before the courts of law in a manner envisaged by the law and within the prescribed constitutional period. We have assured Kenyans that courts will continue to sit even for extended hours to ensure that citizens are not remanded for periods beyond what the Constitution provides. Let me also speak to the attack on the court infrastructure that we have witnessed on some of our court buildings across the country. And say that courts are the, bast the last bastions for the rule of law. And I believe those who attacked the court premises were trying to undermine the rule of law and were trying to interfere with the independence of the judiciary. For one, they did not want us to hold this ceremony of admission because they disturbed the Supreme Court. But thank God we are here and you are being admitted. The rule of law remains firm and is strong. <laughs> Our Constitution envisages also a culture of national dialogue and peaceful resolution of grievances and disputes. This is why in the courts, in the judiciary, we have been talking about the multi-door approach to justice, whereby we can negotiate, we can mediate, we can resolve disputes by looking for solutions ourselves because we know the root causes of our problems. Even the way we are brought up, we negotiate for everything. Even when I go to the market, I negotiate with the mama boga because I want a fair deal. So negotiations is part and parcel of us. So I urge all of us as citizens of this great country to remember that peaceful resolution of disputes and grievances is essential to secure national stability and a peaceful and prosperous future as promised in our constitution. Our dear learned friends, to conclude, I want to tell you, your admission to the bar today presents you with immense opportunities for you to exploit and leave a mark in terms of advancing the rule of law and also playing a law in the national development. This is a great country with a great constitution. Let this day be a reminder of your commitment to upholding the ideals of the legal profession. Your journey as an advocate is not just about being a legal expert, as you have been told, but it's also about being a guardian of justice and a defender of the rule of law. Embrace these challenges and opportunities with the same dedication and seal that brought you today. That very energy you used to get to where you are is the same energy you should wake up with every day of your life. Once again, congratulations on your admission to the role of advocates of the High Court of Kenya. 
your journey as custodians of justice and the rule of law begins now. We look forward to your contributions to our legal uh, system and the society at large. I wish you God's blessings. And let nobody discourage you that the profession is saturated. This is a country of 55 million people. And with barely 25,000 lawyers, you are just a drop in the bucket. There is something for each one of you to do and to thrive. And that's what I have told the more than 5,000 advocates I have admitted. I have wished them well. I have wished them God's success. And I have told them to go forth with confidence because God is our provider and he will provide for you. Never, never give up and let nobody ever discourage you. Wear that gown. Wear that, that uh, a title of an advocate with courage. Never apologize one day for being an advocate, but thank God every day that you became an advocate of the High Court. I thank you all, and I believe you are going to have wonderful parties all over celebrating. <laughs> I don't know why nobody invited me. <laughs> of the 5,000 advocates, it's only one who had, had the courage to invite me. Somebody called Chipe Imani invited me for a party. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> but I wish you well. I wish you celebrations. Thank you, and God bless you. <laughs> Again, as patriotic as ever, I think we've seen the first time from the national anthem. Do we see the end? It's a flow. Let's ensure that those who come before the courts of justice to testify are able to testify without any fear at all. Please, some measures and strategies. I do believe, uh, for those who may not be familiar, witness protection provides special protection services to those who are at risk and those witnesses who are intimidated because of the information that they hold and are cooperating with during, uh, before, during, and after any trial process, either the court, the tribunal, the commissions, or at an inquiry. Allow me to end with this because it's important. Of Psalms chapter 82, uh, verse 3 to 4, and it reads Defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause 
of the poor and the oppressed. Rest naked. God bless you. Thank you, thank you so much, Commissioner Rubin, for the wonderful words. Now I want to welcome the Lady the Chief Justice. All protocols observed. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Um, once again, it's uh, my singular to be asked in my capacity as the chair of the uh, senior, senior council bar to say a few words at this occasion to the advocates. It's customary in, on occasions like this and the nature and the form of the Wow, you, I hope you are taking in that. I know it might not be sunny outside, but you should wear a warm dress, isn't it? Why wear a long dress? How many of you remember the book that uh, Commissioner Mamori Baruch read? How many? How many? Don't talk about this, you don't remember. <laughs> Please remember, you will ask that question before you are allowed to cite the wrong. <laughs> Let me welcome from the Council of Legal Education. Um, thank you, because uh, today marks a significant milestone in your career journey and the beginning of a very exciting chapter in your today. Knowing that each of you has shown incredible dedication and perseverance in pursuing your studies and passing the bar exams which we administer at the Council of Legal Education, which has led to your admission today. This is truly a childhood dream that you've had for years. And I know for sure, someone like Salin Dutachui, this has been your lifetime dream and you have achieved it, and many of you seated here in this room. And in the pursuit of justice, equity, and upholding the rights of those that you serve, your work has the power to make tangible impact in the lives of individuals and the community and the nation at large. Approach your responsibility during my admission. The former Chief Justice Evans Gisheru told us that a lawyer is as good as his word. So make sure that your words and your action are always in tandem. As you embark on this new journey, remember that the legal world is not just about statutes, it's not about case law. From my experience, it's about people understanding and a commitment to positively impacting the lives of those you serve. And once again, on behalf of the Council of Legal Education, congratulations on this remarkable achievement. And the legal fraternity eagerly awaits your contribution. And I have no doubt that each will with success, fulfillment, and that steadfast commitment to justice. Thank you. The Honorable Chief, allow me to adopt the protocols as were previously pronounced. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. God is good. And all the time. The ones who know the last part are the ones who go to church. Eh? <laughs> so today is a significant occasion, a day of celebration and reflection, a day where we acknowledge the hard work, dedication, and the many hours of sweating that has brought you to this auspicious moment in your legal careers. And the president, I'm filled with immense pride and optimism for the future of our profession, for it's in your hands that this button of justice, integrity, and advocacy will be carried on. In times of crisis like the ones we are now in this more under the spotlight, I know that you know that we are the protectors of human rights, defenders of justice, and the voice of the voiceless. Our profession is not just about the glamorous suits. And by the way, you all look amazing. 
It is about championing the principles of respect for the rule of law, justice, and humanity. As advocates, we must raise to the occasion, especially in times of turmoil, to ensure that justice prevails and the rule of law is upheld. I dare say that when you're fighting for justice, it doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It doesn't mean that you don't care about your life. Courage is fear well prayed for. And so, as my chair of the Senior Council, Bao, was talking about embedding justice into your character. It means standing up even when you're afraid. It means getting out of your comfort zone. You've seen advocates coming all around, coming out all around the country. And I hope you will be joining that battalion. Today is your first successful submission. Your second or your third, you may get the opportunity to defend children that have been arrested, who have been shot at, to defend members of the public. And I urge you to treat it as your most important brief. Because in a backdrop of our country where people are being abducted every single day, where numbers are being skewed in terms of the numbers of people who have been killed, where property is valued higher than life, it is important for advocates to stand and say no. I dare tell you, no one will remember how expensive your suits were, how great your car was. But the people who will remember you are the people that you helped at their most desperate time. When they had no one to stand for them, when they had no one to ensure that their voice is heard. They are voiceless people in the estates that you live. They are voiceless people around your neighborhoods. It is you who can be that voice for them. And in times like this, it requires us to stand up and rise up to the occasion. This will be your determination of the kind of advocate you shall be. We are required to show humanity. And so at a time like this, when the members, the Kenyans are calling out for help, this is how we distinguish ourselves as advocates. This is why advocates are important in this nation. And today, as you mark your first successful day, I tell you the journey has just begun. To ensure that we protect justice, to ensure that the rule of law is upheld, more than ever you'll be visiting these very courts. We'll be camping in these courts because it's in these courts that we can raise the voice of the voiceless. As newly admitted advocates, you now bear a solemn duty to champion the rule of law. This duty is not merely an obligation, but a calling. The rule of law is the bedrock of our society, ensuring that justice is not a privilege of the few, but a right for all. Your responsibility is to uphold this principle in every case you handle, every argument you make, and every client you represent. Be courageous, take courage. We are all we are in it together. Today, our nation stares at uncertain times. The ongoing protest led by the Gen Z against the finance bill 2024 has brought to the forefront issues of economic justice, fairness, corruption, and accountability. As advocates are called upon to navigate these turbulent times with understanding, integrity, and love for your country. Your role is not just to speak for the law, but to advocate for justice, to be the voice of reason, and to ensure that rights of all citizens are protected. I know you know that the Law Society of Kenya is more than just a professional body. It's our collective home. 
it is our home of brothers and sisters committed to the pursuit of justice and the betterment of our society. I urge you to be active members of the Law Society of Kenya. Contribute your time, your talents, and your energy to the growth and development of our profession. Together we can achieve great things, but you must play your part. Here is something I tell all newly admitted advocates, and I'll tell it to you. It may be exciting to open your farm, that is nice. But if you can get an opportunity to work under senior or get mentorship, take it. Talking up from someone who has benefited from mentorship, from those who have struggled before me, those who have walked in these shoes before me. I'm a clear beneficiary of mentorship of so many seniors that have held my hand. And that has helped me get to the position I am today. This is a moment to serve your principles and shape your character. It's a moment to ensure that as you celebrate this milestone, you cherish this journey. Celebrate today, pop champagne or click your juice glasses with your family and friends and remember that this day on and many anniversaries to come, you need to tick the boxes and say how far have you grown, how far you have come. In addition, because we are brothers and sisters in the profession, it is essential that we support one another, hold each other's hands. As you grow, lift others up. You'll have your class that you celebrate and you'll stay in WhatsApp groups. Let it not just be for cosmetics. Hold each other's hand, be accountable, check in on one another. Let us not let anyone fall on the wayside. Finally, as you step into this new chapter of your lives, I wish you all success fulfillment and satisfaction of this noble profession can offer you. May you find joy in your work. The profession is ever evolving and to stand out from your peers, you must embrace a growth mindset. Be humble. Learn that you can always learn something new. Pursue further to enhance your skills. The senior um, here, the chair of the senior council bar will confirm to you that the journey of learning and growth is a lifelong one and its commitment to self-improvement that will set you apart and bring you greater success. So my distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and the newest advocates in town, it gives me a lot of joy in knowing that the future of our profession is bright because of you. So embrace this opportunity, make a difference for humanity and yourself. The Law Society will stand with you from today going on forwards. And I urge you that in every step you make, God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, from the Office of the Director of the Republic of Kenya, and the President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, Lady Justice Martha Kome. Allow me to write uh, on the protocols already established. Most 800 colleagues in the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. An academic perspective, which is far different from what you enter into the practice of law. You will require to guard and maintain a very good relationship, just as the president of the Law Society has said. A very good relationship. And in my duty to invite the Honorable the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Lady Justice, Mother Karambo Kome, to talk to us on this, our very important day.